Absolutely. We're getting a couple of questions here. Misha Tate got COVID. She was healthy. Brian Redband says, so it's more than just diet and exercise. But I think, Brian, uh, she seemed to have fought it pretty well, I'm guessing, right? These, the, the, she recovered, did she not? Yeah, I mean, and, and Volk, uh, we had another co comment earlier about uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Alexander Volkanovsky is back. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, these, I mean, these people, they're, they're recovering pretty well, it seems. Well, now... I'll jump in here for a sec because obviously you you get this a lot as well. I mean, we're athletes. Um, you know, we've been in the sport. We know what's going on. Obviously, I can't speak for all athletes, but it's undeniable that generally athletes can be very healthy. But I would digress and say they're more likely very fit rather than very healthy. There are some athletes, um, particularly those who've retired, because I, even I, I will admit, um, during my fight career, I was probably fitter than I was actually healthy. I didn't actually really understand health until I retired and realized what was going on. A, a lot of athletes have a bad habit of we cut hard, we train like absolute animals uh, in preparation for fights, and then post-fight you can kind of let go and then you go out, you get your pizzas, you put on too much weight. There are so many fighters um, that are off-season, they balloon out of weight. Um, and then, you know, the, the weight cutting process on the body is extremely stressful. Every, you know, you, you, you're you very much aware of, um, uh, sorry, got another visitor, you know, post-fight, uh, po uh, fight flu that you um, get, you know, after the fight because your, your immune system, your health has been run down because the amount of stress you put on your body through training and uh, um, cutting weight and then, dieting you know it is stressful on the body and yes we are fit and we have the ability to be healthy and we are generally healthy but we don't always perform healthy behaviors and if someone gets COVID while they're cutting weight they're not in their prime condition so it's not surprising that you're going to see you know some you know difficulty in dealing with the virus because you're already stretching your body and in, in what you're doing to kind of get ready for the fight so I do take um, contention with people saying, oh, but athletes are getting sick. Yes, they do, and they always have, and they always will. It's because of the amount of stress, both psychological and physical, that we put on ourselves in preparing for fights. So uh, generally, they will recover well. They know how to look after themselves. When they do get sick, they're more likely to follow the rules. It's because, you know, if I get an infringe in my knee and the doctor says you have to do you know, 100 knee bends every day. I'll do, did I do 100 knee bends? The average person won't do it, you know, because, you know, they want, they'll, they'll go home, they'll sit home, they'll come back after two weeks ago, my knee's not better. And, you know, they may have done 100 knee bends for the first two days, but then they yeah. stop because they got bored, whereas the athlete will do it every single day. Same thing with COVID. The doctor says, you know, do this, do that, do this every day. They will. They may get sick, but they will recover because they're willing to do what is necessary to recover. Um, but just saying, oh, they, because athletes get it or get sick, that it is worse than it is. It's like, no, you've got to look at the actual situation. There are numerous healthy people that get it. And like I've got, I've had students who've got it. They're asymptomatic. They don't even have symptoms. The only reason they know they had it was because they failed the test, not because, you know, they're in hospital or in bed. Yeah, absolutely. There were some people that ended up in bed and, you know, for a couple of days felt absolutely crappy, but then they recovered. You know, even in Australia, when you're looking at all the they, – they call out, you know, they're doing their daily press conferences. You know, we had 11 people die, 70, you know, three 70-year-olds, four 80-year-olds, you know, four 90-year-olds. Um, you know, they all had um, comorbidities, and it's like, how can you not listen to that and see <clears> – <throat> You know, there might be one third-year-old that dies or, you know, uh, two 40-year-olds or something like that. It's going to happen. It doesn't mean they were healthy. It, you know, they could have undiagnosed health conditions. And it's like, and that's no different because people go, oh, but it's undiagnosed. How can you claim that? And it's the same thing as you get people who die and they literally state tested positive for COVID after they died. 
So was it even the cause of death? No, they just do the test just to double check. Oh, look, they have COVID. They're a COVID death now. Insanity. Add them, add them to the list. Definitely. Uh, yeah. The, the, that's why the numbers, you really, you really don't know. But you said so. I mean, I never thought about it like that. The difference between being fit and being healthy. Because, yeah, fighting is definitely – I mean, I'd say it's – it can – it can teach you a fit lifestyle, but the process of fighting is very unhealthy. The definitely the the last four weeks leading up to the fight, and then the weight cut itself and the fight. It's a pretty unhealthy, pretty unhealthy thing uh, to be and putting your body through. And look, and I hate to bring this up, but it is undeniable that. There is a certain proportion of the athletic community that will use heads, and heads will improve your performance, but they're not necessarily going to improve your health. And you know, I know it's not the entire community, but there is some of them out there, and you're not going to necessarily know, other than if they failed, whether they've um, been doing it. Um, but that is also should be a consideration. The simple fact is, if they're doing um, these behaviors just to improve performance regardless of health risk, you know, what else are they not doing? It's like, um, yes, there's a big difference between health and fitness. And as I said, it's one of the things I discovered um, post-fight career. Um, I had to pull out of, you know, UFC 110, the first fight in Australia, because I blew out my shoulder, um, ended up having to have uh, surgery for it. So I was out for 12 months because I couldn't use my shoulder. I, you know, then... So it took me a while for it to recover and I put on a lot of weight and um, and I kind of hit a point about, you know, 18 months afterwards and I'm looking at myself and, uh, got, you know, going, well, what's, what's happened here? It's like, you know, I, I still carried it pretty well. I was a, I'm a big guy, you know, I'm 6'3". I was uh, 200 pounds. I think I got up to about 240 or something like that. Um, you know, and you can still carry it pretty well, um, you know, you know, wear the right clothes, make sure you don't tie your gate too tight. Um, and, but I kind of realized, whoa, what the, what, what's happened here? And I realized that the way I lived hadn't changed from when I was training. What had, the, only, the only thing that had changed was my workload. So my training out input had drastically dropped because, you know, obviously shoulder surgery, there's only so much I can do. And um, even you can't even run because you can't swing your arms and you know I'd walk or I'd walk and stuff but it just it wasn't and that's when I kind of realized that you have to understand what we do when we're training we can't do when we're not training because you know people say you can't outrun a, a bad diet I, I, I disagree I think you can I think that there is a certain time in your life um, with certain amount of energy levels where you can like you, you see it, you know, <clears throat> numerous athletes' favorite meals are like pizzas or KFC or Jack in the Box or whatever it is. Um, you know, they, they will smash these off season and they cut them out and fight camp. So while you're fighting, you're super fit, you can kind of get away with bad behaviors. And it's not until you stop that really intense training that you kind of realize and you have to get, get, get things back on track and, kind of work out what you're doing right, what you were doing wrong, and then um, fine tune it, which is, you know, what I've spent pretty much the last uh, 10, 11 years, well, take out the two years, about the last 19 years 